Hey everyone, this is Mai with Rubato Music Therapy and today I'm going to talk about how music affects our brains. It's pretty crazy how much of an effect music has on us, whether we're aware of it or not. When I was working in restaurants, my boss would tell me to play loud, fast music during busy nights so that we could get tables to eat and leave faster. I was doubtful of this at first, but it actually worked. I even looked at nights where we would play slower music and see how fast the tables ate and left, and they were consistently 15 to 30 minutes faster with the faster music than with the slower music. I always knew that certain music made me feel a certain way. I would play loud, upbeat music when I was working out, and I would play instrumental lo-fi beats when I was studying, and they always seemed to help me. What I came to realize is that even though we all experience music differently and have different opinions, we all have commonalities that we share with music, which is what makes music therapy so powerful. One of the ways that music affects our brain is how we perceive and understand language. The basic aspects of music, such as pitch and melody, actually have a really big impact on how we understand speech patterns and language. Generally speaking, the left hemisphere of the brain is used for more logical and analytical processing, while the right side of the brain is used mostly for holistic processing. However, music actually activates visual, motor, and coordination areas in our brain on both sides as well as memory and emotion areas. This means that music can have a direct effect on language and syntax. A really famous example of this is Gabby Giffords. Gabby Giffords was a politician who in 2011 was shot through the head during a constituent meeting. She consequently had aphasia, which is the total inability to speak. Music therapy was actually credited as one of the therapies that helped her regain her speech. What they did was they would start with songs that she already knew, like Happy Birthday or American Pie. And they would start singing without words, just humming the songs. Then eventually down the line, instead of humming, they would start adding speech sounds. And then when she was able to do that while singing, they eventually took the melody line out of it. So then she was just speaking. The reason why this worked is that even though areas of her brain that processed language were damaged, the areas that processed music and music memory were not. So this actually helped pave the way to rewiring the language centers of her brain. Phonological awareness, which is the awareness of sound structures within words, is really important in reading and writing. Research has actually shown that pitch awareness and music is directly linked to increased phonological awareness. It's actually been suggested that preschoolers could benefit from music training because it will help heighten their phonological awareness, which in turn will make them better readers and writers in the future. Mandarin is a language that depends largely on different pitch fluctuations to differentiate words. Native Mandarin speakers have been shown to actually be better at identifying pitch differences and interval differences than native speakers of other languages. Conversely, people that are tone deaf actually have a harder time differentiating pitch fluctuations between a statement and a question. This also shows how important the basic aspects of music like pitch and melody are in understanding speech patterns and language. Another way that music can affect your brain is that creating music can actually make you smarter. We've all heard of the Mozart effect. Apparently listening to 20 minutes of classical music as a child a day makes you smarter. Though this has been basically debunked, it is true that making music can make you smarter. I mention this all the time, but the skills that you learn in music are skills that you can transfer to almost any other non-musical goal area. Music can help us process emotions, it can improve our motor skills, and it can change the way that we think about ourselves within a group setting. One study showed that 90% of children that received musical training for just 20 days showed improved verbal intelligence. It's also been shown that children that take music lessons have better fluid intelligence, which is the ability to solve new problems and find patterns in new situations, 
as well as decreased anxiety and better support systems for each other. Being involved in creating music can positively impact our lives and set us up for success. So awesome. Another way that music can affect our brains is that music can actually act as a pain reliever. A research review study in 2015 showed that patients that listened to music during or even before an operation had less anxiety, less pain, and required less medications than those that didn't listen to music. We're not totally sure about how this works, but one theory is that music actually helps inhibit stress levels and decreases our sensitivity and perception of pain. Music that people enjoy also helps stimulate dopamine levels, which might be another reason why we have a lower perception of pain. It's really important to note that in this study, just listening to music had a huge impact on perception of pain in these patients, which just shows how powerful music can be. Another explanation for why this could be happening is that music is just a distraction from the pain. It provides a rhythmic structure to release tension and for deep breathing, which are both factors in pain management. I think it's so cool how music affects us in ways that we don't even realize. That's why I think that music therapy is really effective. If you have questions about anything that I've covered in this video, or if you just want to share a story about your experience with music, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll be providing a link to all the research that I mentioned in this video in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching. See you next time.